Hello and welcome to episode 105 of the Road to Glory Save here on Football Manager 22. My name's Russ Clemson. Today we have the season review and transfer special after, I'd say, it's a pretty decent season for us. As you can see, we won the Carabao Cup, so let's just jump straight into the season review and see how well we did. So, uh, new arrivals is the first screen we look at. Uh, they are saying our signing of the season was Louis Gourlay. He joined us in January window, and yeah, he did play quite well for us. Carlos Edwards also did quite well joining us in the January window on a free. A um, little bit disappointed in Cristiano, only playing uh, 14 games for us. He's injury prone. I probably should have picked up on that when uh, the reports come through. Maybe we'll just get rid of him this summer. Um, I can't have an injury prone defender, especially the amount of money we paid for him. 20 and a half million. It's a lot. Uh, Dotwiler had a good season for us. I would have liked his uh, rating to be a lot higher, but that is what it is. Decent loanee signing for us, Kosiewicz. Um On the lower end of it, Josh Hope. Record sign-in, and he's down there. Pierman again, joined us in the January window. I think he'd be quite good next season. Akbar. Mm, I'm... Judges are right for that one. He's 22. Maybe next season he could be quite decent for us. Same as um, Flores, 26 million. At uh, 26 years old, sorry, paying 3.8 for him. Didn't play as many games as I thought he was going to. Squissoni is a very decent player for us. Um, I quite like him. And Sainz, obviously, we had him on loan before. So let's have a look at the season results. So in the Premier League, we'll start with um, board expected us to fight bravely against relegation, and we did. They've given us a B plus for the season. Um, they weren't happy to start with. Uh, well, I say to start with towards the end of the season, the Man City game where we beat them three two at their ground kind of changed their uh, change of opinion of, of that. Finished 14, 44 points, uh, 12 wins, eight draws, eighteen losses. So we've lost half the uh, just under half the games we played in. And a goal difference of minus 16. So that's an improvement on last year's 33 goals conceded. We just need to get that into the positive now. In terms of the FA Cup, knocked out by Sunderland. Um, again, it's lower league opposition. It's not going to sound in the third round of the Cup. Can't be doing that going forward. We're, uh, we're meant to be a Premier League side that gets like the fourth, fifth round. Not getting knocked out in the third round by the lower league oppositions. Board giving us a C- minus for that. Then obviously you've got the Carabao Cup, which we won, beating Liverpool 2 1 in the final. Um yeah, you could say it was an easy run into it. Portsmouth, West Brom, Huddersfield, Hull. Only playing the, the two Premier League sides in Bournemouth and Liverpool. But at the end of the day, we got through, and that's that's that, that's what counts really, isn't it? Board have given us uh, an A plus on that. So gets us into Europe. Moments to remember then. So the biggest win was the 4-1 win over Southampton. Match to remember was a 2-1 win over Sheffield uh, United. And goal of the season goes to Gourlay. That come in the uh, the Southampton game as well. Finances then. So uh, some of this is going to be down. Uh, broadcast revenues down by uh, just over 2 million. Sponsorship's gone up though. I'm guessing that's because of the, we're at our own stadium now. Uh, we're still a three-star national reputation club. Uh, corporate hospitality is down. I'm guessing that's because we've moved from um, Selhurst Park, which is a bigger stadium, to Edgar Cow. It's terrible. I think it's like 13k less than what we can get in that in that stadium. So that's probably why that's down. Prize money's gone up. That's because we've uh, we won the Carabao Cup, didn't we? And uh, prize money's going to come from that. And we finished higher in the league as well. Uh, match day revenues down. That's probably going to be related to moving to the Edgar Kale Arena. Merchandise we made 1.32 million uh, in in merchandise sales. 132k of that was from non-domestic sales. We shipped 12,456 shirts. Hugh Gill selling the most again. He's the club legend after all, so that's why he's going to uh, be selling those. Uh, Grandana, who's leaving us, sold some. Sains, Hope, uh, Celadon, all attacking players. So. They're doing well for us. Let's have a look at our lineup then. So we shifted to uh, the 4-3-3 Gagan press part of the way through the season. It seems to work for us quite well. So Goodridge in goal, Romero, Dotwire, Conti, and Manny at the back. Although Carlos Edwards did play there more often. Gourlay at the base midfield, Squissoni and Kovacevic in midfield, Sainz and Hope on the wings, and settled on up front. So yeah, pretty solid team in, uh, if I don't say so myself. No place for um, Joe Hugill, though. Accolades. So, we didn't win anything. Uh, club awards. Conte got fans player of the season. He's, he did play quite well, to be honest. 
Masila got young player of the season. Gourlay signing of the season, which we knew. Goal of the season, we knew went to Gourlay. Top goal scorer, Celadon with 11. Ah, we need a striker that's going to be scoring 20, 30 goals now. Um, 11 is just not going to cut it in the Premiership. Katiano with 7 assists gets the highest there. Most amount of the matches goes to Celadon with 4. That's quite low, really. Although it could be spread out through the rest of the squad. I, 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 I'm edging more towards we didn't get many man of the matches. Uh, Vladimir Mane has got the highest average rating is 7.1. And most passes completed per 90 is Matthew Webster with 64 per 90. It's quite low for us. Normally we are good with a pass in. I wonder if that's because we shifted away from the Tiki Taka into the uh, Gagan Press. In terms of record breakers, uh, Joe Hugo has now scored 172 league goals for us. I don't think that's ever going to be broken. And I also don't think he's going to be scoring anymore. If, the, if an offer comes in for him this summer, he's going to be going. Highest transfer fee paid was for Hope at 25 million. It's a lot of money for a player that didn't perform as well as I hoped he would. Um, ignore the pun. And the highest transfer fee received was for Mifta at 17.28. So it's a lot of money coming into the club, but we've also spent a lot out. It's got a history in the making then. So we've got this here for some reason, which I uh, don't understand why that game's there. That should be the Liverpool one. We win the Carabao Cup and then Maxi Foot, uh, Robert Gutierrez of Maxi Foot says a successful season for Dulwich Hamlet really began to pick up speed in the middle of the campaign. We started off as a flurry. We were top of the table at one point. We dipped off, come back in the middle, won the Carabao Cup, tailed off again and then managed to survive. So th this upcoming season, it is all about finding the players to keep us in the league again and, and obviously achieve mid-table look to win the FA Cup so we can get into Europe again next year and um, push on from there really if we look at the squad depth uh, Holland's going to be coming up from Gourlay doesn't play up there Cope mm, not going to have him I think we need I think we need someone on the right Midfield, I think we need a couple players to play in there. Um, I don't know why I'm taking Brown back yet because he's going to be playing there. We need definitely to need someone on the left wing and we need a goalkeeper and maybe a couple of centre backs. It's going to be an interesting summer, put it that way. So, just looking at what the board want us to do next season, club vision wise um, entertaining football is always there, attacking football is always there, possession based football has always been there. Same as high tempo pressing football. Five year plan is to work within the wage budget. We've always done that, haven't we? We've um, quite a decent side for keeping within the wage budget. Expand the stadium. So they're obviously seeing that 16, 16K, 700 is not enough. We need to be probably around a 25 mark to be making some decent money, especially if we're going to be in Europe now. Next season, they want us to fight bravely against relegation and reach the semi-finals of the Euro Cup 2 as a minimum. It's going to be difficult, I think. Um... Signings is going to probably be the uh, what achieves us on that one there. So I'm just going to confirm that they are pretty pretty easy things to to keep the board happy. Um, have we got any budgets yet? Although we we have um, Gourlay's picked up second place in the uh, goal of the season. Um, there's no budgets just yet. As soon as we do get budgets, I will let you guys know it. So, budgets for next season. We've got 1.2 million in wages and 63.84 to spend on players. It's a lot of money for players. I'm going to uh, happily spend that one. Um, I may shift some of that into the wages. So, boost that up to maybe 1.4, 1.5. Board are also planning to increase the stadium by 8, 8. Well, 8,338 fans, which takes us up to 25 and 15. I said 25 is a good amount. Uh, it's going to be done by... Well, they're going to start it today by the looks of things, going by the date. And it will be finished in April next year. So we are going to be moving to the Den for the time. Oh, why can't we go to Selhurst Park? So we're moving to the Den. The Den holds 20,000. It is with Millwall. 
But yeah, it needs this extra fans in the stadium. It's going to cost us 12 million, well, nearly 13 million to improve the stadium. We only had it last year. Absolutely excellent. The board are, well, they're uh, they're backing us, aren't they now? We've also upgraded our youth category from category four to category three. Uh, it's cost us five million pound a year, but we need the youth players to come through. So I'm glad they're doing that now. Um, let's go and make some signings then. So we have a few players that are going to be coming through the door. Two defenders. We have Man uh, Manuel Fajardo coming join us from Liverpool. Tom Landers is joining us from Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, Anderson Luiz is joining us in midfield. Victor Junker and Christian Perez. And striker-wise, Timo Casp is going to be joining us. Uh, once they all come through, we'll show you them. Um, I think we are going to need some more players coming in. These six will be vital to the, to the team, but we need some more depth. So, the Premier League transfer window has officially opened. So, the six players that are joining us are Manuel Fajardo, joins us from Liverpool. He's cost us £24 million. Um, can play right back and at the centre. I, I think we needed someone who's going to be doing both of those, kind of like what Dotweiler does. Uh, looks pretty decent. If you have a look at his history as well, from when he's playing at Liverpool, um, we obviously hasn't played that much. Yes, we have spent a lot of money on him. He's 23, Uruguayan international. I think he's going to add that depth that we need there. Physicals look great. Uh, tackling a 15, marking a 12. Crossing needs to be a lot better if he's going to be playing fullback. Um, first touch is quite good, but if we do play him at centre-back, he's got all that there. Concentration of 16, anticipate, anticipation of 14. So pretty happy with that signing. Victor Junker, 20-year-old midfielder, joins us from Copenhagen for 7.25 million. Um, plays in the centre of, mid, uh, centre of the mid. Five-star potential. I'm hoping we can get um, get him to achieve that there. Um, looks pretty decent. Um, where would we probably be playing him? Mainly in the... If you're looking at his attributes. Um... Would Mazala suit him? I guess a little bit. It does look quite decent for, for that um, that role. So that's probably where we're going to end up pay, uh, playing him. Uh, Timo Kasp joins us. He's a striker. We spent £30 million on him from Dortmund. It's a lot of money. Again, he hasn't played that many games. Looks like he can improve quite a lot. Technique of 17. Finishing of 13. First touch of 13. Physicals look great. Natural fitness at 18. Strength for 17. So he's going to be quite strong up front. Uh, mentals look okay as well. Um, definitely going to add us the uh, support we need up front and the depth. Tom Landers joins us now. We spent a bit of money on this player as well. £40 million from Tottenham. He's playing down the championship last season with Leeds, picking up a 6.98 rating over 43 games. If we have a look at his uh, attributes, tackling a 17, marking a 15, heading a 15. He's coming in as probably our best defender we've got. Four-star current ability, five-star potential. Uh, physicals are fantastic. Jumping reach isn't great, though, compared to his 15 heading. Uh, mentals look good as well, so he's definitely going to add us um, some, some fire in that defence that we need. Uh, Anderson Luiz, 25-year-old midfielder, joins us from Cor over in Brazil. Um, he can play out on the wing, he can play up front, he can play in the centre center of midfield. He's just an, an all-round utility player, really. He can also play it right back, so if we need him there, he can do it. Um, physical stats look great as well. Um, techniques, Technical stats are good. Mental stats, probably some of them need to be some improvement like concentration decision making but he's quite a determined player position work needs to be uh needs to improve especially going to be playing there or if we just hold him hold him in midfield he should be okay and the last pair of the who is joining us is christian per uh, perez it's a 19 year old uh, left-sided player can play left midfield can play up on the wing we'll probably train him in that position uh get one of the more senior players to uh give him some advice we may even loan him out this season because if you look at his uh his current ability and potential. He's only coming in as a four star potential and two and a half star current. So, yeah, I mean, if we loan him out to Phoenix, loan him out to maybe a League One or Championship side, they can improve in there. I still think we need a lot of other players to join us. 
um, I'll have a little bit of a clear round of this. Dykstra and Nogbu have been promoted. They've both got work permits now, so they're going to come in. They're only going to get better. Um, where else do I feel we are weak? I think we need a defensive midfielder. With what we've got at the club, I think that's what we need to improve there. And we definitely need a goalkeeper. So there are two areas that I'm going to be looking into and also at the left back. So as soon as we get some more players through the door, we'll let you guys know. So we've officially ticked over into the new season. The board want us to finish quarterfinals now uh, in the Euro Cup too. So they've dropped that expectation there. Avoid attempt to avoid relegation. I think we can do that with a couple of decent signings. Uh, fifth round of the FA Cup minimum and fourth round of the Carabao Cup. If we have a look at the league table then, where the media think we're going to finish. 19th. 451 to win the league. I think we need to improve on that massively, though. Uh, we've got no one in the Dream 11. In terms of key players, it's just Tom Landers by the looks of things. Yeah, so we do need some improvements. A, a goalkeeper is going to definitely improve our position in the league. Uh, defensive midfielder, a left back, a centre back, maybe a striker. We've got money to spend. Let's just see what we can do, really. Uh, it's going to be coming up to the transfer release day or contract release day, should I say. So there might be a few players knocking about that we can pick up on the Jeep and improve the squad that way. So there's confirmation that Frank Romero has joined Zenit. Uh, players to leave on loan. Kovacevic is going, but he's going. Well, he's leaving us on loan. He's also joining Bayern, so we've missed out on a decent player there. Um, Transfer-wise, we are looking at a goalkeeper. Scouting him in at the moment. Go into the inbox, should be able to find him that way. It's this guy, Eric Fai uh, Hi Hacker. Yeah. We'll just call him Erica. I think that's the easiest way to do, do with that there. Um, five star potential, three and a half star current ability. So he's a little bit better than, well, he's a lot better than what uh, Mel Goodridge is. We're scouting him in just to see what his physical side of the game is going to be like. Um, if he comes in, then I can see Goodridge actually leaving us. We brought ourselves in a wonder kid midfielder. Joins us from Aston Villa. We have paid twenty-eight and a half million pounds for him. That was his release clause. Uh, his name's Sinan Akyuz. Can play in well in the Mazala role. He's going to do pretty decent in in, in those there. Physicals are great for a twenty-year-old. Uh, mentals they look good as well. Technical side of the game solid as well. Passing in fourteen, technique in fifteen, dribbling fourteen. First touch of 14, so he's going to suit that Mazzala role quite well. Really pleased that little bit of business there. I think I'm done in the centre midfield. I just need someone to play defensive midfield. I know this guy can do it, but I, do I want him more in midfield? It all depends on what we can bring in, really, doesn't it? We're still looking for that goalkeeper. So we ship out Leonardo Cruciani to uh, Lyon for 14 million. Yeah, we've lost uh, six, uh, six and a half million pound on him. But he was injury prone. That's the reason he's gone. He's, he's left us. Um, in a different world, maybe he would have worked out for us. But I can't have players that are going to constantly be injured. If we have a look at the... Uh, I don't know if we can do that on this now. Uh, fitness. Was it going to show me? No, it's not. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to leave us. Quite happy for him to go. So we've brought in another striker in on loan from Chelsea. Christian Andrade joins us. He is a three-star current belief, four and a half star potential player. Can play out on the right wing, play on the left wing, can also play up front. Only issue is I think I've annoyed um, Hugh Gill by bringing him in. Um, no offers have come in for Hugh Gill. That's the only, the only problem. And Hugh Gill is declining. Um, just to see what we can do, really. See if we can appease Hugh Gill. He is the team leader of the side. We're not bringing Andrade in to replace him. We're bringing him for cover. We're bringing him in to improve us, really. Um, just see if we can get Hugh Gill back on our side. So we have the draw for the European Cup 2 qualifying round. I think if we win this, we end up in the proper one. So let's just draw the teams and see who we get. We are either playing Nifty from Russia or... Well, Nifty, sorry, from uh, Azerbaijan... Or Sochi from Russia, so I reckon we're uh, I reckon we're going to be into the group stage of the Euro Cup too. Still working on a goalkeeper deal. It's n every goalkeeper I've gone for. It's been too expensive. We are looking at one from Newcastle though. 
Um, where is he? Do, 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 do. Facondo Cajon. Uh, three and a half star current ability, four star potential. Definitely going to be an upgrade on what uh, Goodridge is. Just need to get that deal across the deal uh, across the line now. And there we have it. Confirmation that Cajon is officially a Dulwich Hamlet player. I think it's going to be a massive upgrade on what we have at the moment with uh, Goodridge. Goodridge can now be the uh, cup goalkeeper. I may even play him in the. Uh, some of the cup games, uh, the cup games, some of the European games as well. But I, th I think it's going to be our goalkeeper for the next at least four seasons whilst we establish ourselves in the Premiership and move up the table, mid table team finishing hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, really happy with this business. Looking at another right winger as well, but that all depends on if uh, Mane leaves us. We've got two £17 million deals in for him. If we can get that deal across the line, we'll show you. So, we have the draw for the second round of the Carabao Cup. We are going to be playing Barnet, and we're away that game. So we're going back to the Hive. We haven't been to the Hive for, what, two, three seasons now? be nice to go back there. Barnet are in League 2. We're into the third round, aren't we? Come on, boys. So uh, Sochi have got through. Uh, we're going to be playing them straight after the first game of the season, which is Tottenham. So what we'll do is we'll show you the Tottenham game, and we'll I think, probably show both of the... Uh, Euro Cup 2 games in the first episode of the new season, which will be uh, the next episode after this one, really. Let's get through to the Tottenham game now. Uh, we'll pick we'll pick the to we'll pick the team closer to it. If we have a look at the Premier League, where the media think we're going to finish, we've gone up. We've gone up to 18th now. Uh, still, we still got no one in the Dream Eleven. And in terms of key players. Cajon's in there, Landers is in there, and that is it. So, transfer transfer window has been quite busy for us. Uh, Manny's decided not to leave, so I'm going to speak to the board about bringing in this guy here. Um, Gorgiev Goncharenko from Kiev. Yeah, he can play, play in the midfield. He can play also play out on that right wing, which is where I think we're going to be light. Um, looking at transfer, the transfer history, three players there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six players, six, seven players there. A lot of players have left us as well. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the business that we've done this season. Um, we just need to translate it on the field now, don't we? So if you guys have enjoyed that, big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with this journey. And as always, thank you very much for watching.